Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to have a go at another simple landscape. Today it's going to be a seascape with a wonderful British pier on it. Now for those of you who aren't familiar with uh, with a pier, I mean I think I think we've got them all around the world, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah thanks Anne. Um, well this is Tynmouth here, which is a place that I visit very often down in Devon. It's a fantastic looking site, especially when the sun rises or sun sets. So grab your paints and let's get started. Okay, so I've got a, a six by eight inch piece of watercolor paper and I am masking it down with washi tape around the edge. So just make sure you've got a, a good seal around the edge. And then what I've done is I've drawn a horizontal line just sort of below halfway, almost two thirds of the way down. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna mark out a few sort of perspective lines. Now I've done this little uh, vertical line. Um, now I've got to say now that my terminology is terrible for um, nautical things. I know uh, a few things, but not many. So um, I'm gonna just sort of do a little line here for the the idea of where the water sort of hits hits the sand and then from here i am going to be drawing um the the posts that come out of the water called the groin now don't laugh if you've never heard of that before it's a, it's a real terminology um but especially at tinmouth pier we have these posts sort of wedged into the sand um, and they're there to help with the uh, tidal erosion I think so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw in these posts and they're going to get sort of just a bit smaller and smaller as we go into the water and that line is also helping us sort of gain the sense of perspective make sure they're going to get a little bit closer together. They're going to get a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner, and a little less defined as we go into the ocean. Until we see nothing, until they just disappear entirely. So that's the first thing. And there are a few sort of horizontal boards on some of them. So that's one thing and then we have the pier the grand Tynmouth pier so again we're going to use that point as our horizon line and I am going to draw in a line like that I'm going to use that as my pivot point and then have a line like that there so it's sort of all coming to where the horizon meets that little post so it's, it's sort of part of the groin I think but I just wish I knew what it was called it's like a it's like a sort of crow's nest basket on top of a thing um, on top of a post and now I'm going to decide the, sort of the height of my pier and I'm going to just follow along that parallel line and now I've got a sense of the pier kind of shape so the, the posts the verticals coming down into the water and now I can start to sort of create a sense of the sort of buildings on top and the the railings so everything coming from there is going to be getting just a little bit bigger um, I don't want to sort of go into too much detail with the building but there is a so again just keep thinking of that central point And you'll see from there you can start to get a, a nice sense of perspective. Now they've got these nice uh, lamp posts, so I'll put those in just very basically. I think this would be good though for anyone who lives near a pier or, or wants to just paint one. Um, Tinmouth Pier is, is great, it's not the most ornate pier I've ever seen. I've definitely seen ones that have got a lot more going on. But that's the, the sort of general basic blocks and there's a few sort of little sort of pavilion bits and shelters 
along the way and then of course we've got all the all the sort of uprights going into the water so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in a few at this end and then they're going to get just a little bit closer together until they're just lines okay this is all sort of just done by eye and I honestly once you've got these perspective lines in you too will just be able to kind of be judging it things basically get smaller and more squashed up as they go further away but other than that I don't think you need to be worrying about every single little bit of detail and there are most certainly a lot more uh, horizontals and, and verticals that I'm going to draw in. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine I've got one that's on sort of the near side but of course the pier is a, is a sort of got two sides so I'll be drawing in like a one on the, on the far side so that one will be slightly less defined and that will be sort of hitting the water just a bit higher so you might want to give yourself a little reminder of where that one's hitting the water and from that I'm actually gonna I'm gonna stop with the drawing and get on with the painting because I think sometimes focusing too much on the drawing especially when you don't have a sort of a drawing guide or a download right in front of you it can be a bit bit much and I don't tend to sort of teach too much focus on drawing so let's get on with the painting I've got a mop brush here just getting it nice and wet in my water hmm. and my mop brush seems to have a bit of dust and dirt on it no problem it's very hard to keep everything completely pristine but it's all good it all goes so I'm just wet the page entirely and I'm also now sort of almost mopping up any debris coming off the brush okay what we want is a, a general damp coverage all over the page nothing too puddly or sopping wet or anything and now I'm going to look at the sky colour I'm going to do a nice sort of bright blue daytime sky just to start us off um, but maybe with the slightest hint of evening coming in so in the distance it'll fade away and get a little bit more yellowy warm and then we'll be able to reflect that in the sea below so we want to get a lot of our colors woken up and ready because there's, a, there's going to be sort of quite a lot happening at once so I've got cobalt blue deep and then I've got some Windsor blue here which is a lovely sort of just slightly turquoisey blue and I find that together they make a great blue sky Windsor blue is called Windsor because it's a Windsor and Newton colour. I'm also using my one stroke half inch brush which is part of a new set that I sell in my shop. Um, then the other thing to look at is colours for the beach. So I've got yellow ochre here, a bit of burnt sienna. I mean I'm not so sure about cadmium yellow. I don't really feel like there is actually much in there. It's more sort of orangey brown tones. So we've got those ready as well. And then obviously the pier is going to be sort of dark metal tones. Um, the groin posts are going to be a sort of slightly greeny wooden colour. But for now, we're going to focus on washes for the, the sky and sea. So I'm just going to make sure this brush is nice and clean and the page has been slowly sort of settling and drying nicely as we go so let's begin so I am going to start by painting in some sky now I'm going to create some clouds by not painting just little bits of the page and what I've done is I've sort of used the base of the one stroke brush to sort of create the bottom of a cloud and then just sort of gently paint it around it. Not worried too much about sort of creating the rest of the cloud, but if you sort of put it, it's about putting that slightly stronger bit of colour in sort of underneath. 
and I'm just sort of gently avoiding the pier but of course the page is wet so it will it will sort of go into the pier a little um, now I'm going to take just a little bit of cadmium orange and just run that across the horizon line and I'm going to just let that settle in and do its thing so that's a very nice looking sky for the sea I want just a little bit of Payne's Grey into that watery colour because of course the sea is a reflection of the sky um, but I want to make sure there's a, just a hint more darkness in there so clean off the brush once again and I'm going to start with with the blue and this time I'm going to be painting and using the brush more from a sort of side angle here Still on the wet page, but it is slowly drying, and that's great because what I want is just a little bit more sort of texture in that sea. Get a bit of that Payne's grey in there. And then I'm going to start to introduce the sort of brown colours just where the sea starts to meet the sand because those last bits of ocean are going to start to show through some of the, the sandy colour. And then a bit of yellow ochre. And the page really is starting to dry now. But that's fine because I quite like the slightly more textured approach and then I'm just going to take some slightly stronger colour, a bit of burnt sienna, a bit of yellow ochre and just place that in. Okay that's looking really nice. The page is still just a little bit damp though which is great, it's what we want. And I'm now going to get a size four pointed round brush and I'm gonna take a bit more of that Payne's Grey and I'm now going to drop in some dilute Payne's Grey into the water. And in fact, I think I could get just a little bit more on it. So now for all of the uprights, and for all of the posts. So it's amazing how much dampness there still is there. It's amazing. And now just take the brush once or twice. Clean wet brush, nothing on it. And of course we've got this post in the water too. And now in the distance, I'm just going to add a few sweeps of that dark colour. And we're now going to let this dry. But that is a fantastic start for our pier scape. The page is on its way to being dry, but it's still just, it's just a tiny bit damp. Um, I've now got a little bit of cadmium red mixed into my uh, brown and tan colours here and what I want to do just with my size 4 brush is I'm going to begin to paint in a very very basic wash of colour onto the buildings up on the top so there is a, a sort of vertical beam that sort of comes down over the building there and I'm just going to paint it in there and there as well and I'm going to now mix up a, a sort of shadowy colour using brown Payne's grey to make a make a grey, oh, a warm grey colour 
which is going to be the basis of my pier structure. So I'm going to get a size 2 tenths brush and my aim is to have the pier sort of get more defined as it comes into the foreground. So what I want to see is I'm going to just take somewhere in the middle and just see what the page is doing. So it's dry enough for me to paint in something quite defined like this. And you can see in painting two little horizontal, two horizontal, two parallel vertical lines, we get a really nice little bit of light highlight on the on the post. But of course, as it goes further and further away, we're not going to be able to manage that because it's much thinner and finer. So I'm just going to paint those with just a bit of a, a single line and a slightly fainter colour. So now we're getting towards the foreground. See, my hope is that there's just going to be this tiny bit of dampness left on the page. It's going to give everything just a slightly soft appearance. So the colour is getting just a bit stronger as we get to the front. And now I'm going to place in some colour on these as well. Now we're going to use a sort of warmer brown. So I'm going to get burnt sienna in with my yellow ochre. But I also am going to place in a bit of green gold, a bit of sort of moss on the wood. going to use a size zero pointed round brush to start to apply these long strokes that will just allow for a little bit of wood grain. Do one sort of plain and I might add just a few little low lights of burnt sienna like that. And then as I start to go down the, the wood I want to bring in this green mossy colour. But I will also use just a little bit of the shadowy colour as well. We're still keeping things fairly light. I've decided that the sun is hitting sort of from this side, so we're getting that little bit of highlight, and this is going to be the lighter side of the post. So I'm going to now paint in all of the posts on this side with a few sort of streaky brush strokes like that, a bit of the green moss, and just a little bit of a few dabs of, of darkness, but really the, the real darkness is going to come on that side. So as those go off into the distance, they're just simpler and simpler so a little bit of the pale colour and a bit of green. And now I'm going to paint in the darker side. So I'm taking my shadow colour and sort of painting it in in a similarly sort of streaky approach. But then I'm still adding in a little bit of the green. and some brown at times. And I've sort of waited for these first sections to dry sort of somewhat, but as I said, I, I'm keen to paint this in a quite a soft way. I don't want anything too defined. And especially as it heads off into the ocean, we're going to be painting in lots more sort of shadow and reflection. So all these things that feel a bit sort of like they're just floating in in a bad way, like in a not good way in the ocean are, are all going to suddenly feel very grounded shortly. I'm going to continue with my sort of fairly loose and minimal approach to painting the pier by adding just a little 
sweep of colour, little shadow colour onto the roofs there. Um, I will do just a little bit more. Be careful not to stick your hand in the, the stuff you've just painted. Um, so yeah, we'll just get some on the roofs and then there we go. Just keeping it really minimal and loose at this point. We're going to let that dry. Okay, I can now paint without sticking my hand in wet paint. So we can now enjoy just getting a bit more detail in on the the pier building at the top. So I'm just using a really sort of limited palette to just create some really simple details. So this here, having just painted in a sweep of the shadow mix, I'm now just streaking it across with a wet brush to get a sort of slatted building look, which also just is a good way of achieving a bit of shadow and depth without without really doing much. And there are a few little windows that we're just gonna get in there with the side of the brush. A few little windows along here. Like I said, it's, it's we're keeping it really simple. And then I'm going to take a slightly more diluted shadowy color and paint in these uprights. And these are just going to be more solid. And now it's time for the bit I've sort of been avoiding because I'm not quite sure with my left hand how to paint it in, but I think we'll just go like this from over the top. I want to basically paint in this long sort of horizontal bit. And you can see here what's rather nice is just by painting it in a rather sort of brush strokey loose hand way, I'm I'm getting sort of wobbles and light and shade on it which I'm actually really pleased about. It's just the sort of the platform of the pier really, but it does have quite a lot of sort of light and shade in it. And then I'm actually going to take a rigger brush to get the banisters going. And this is so much easier to paint long slender lines. So we've got this pencil line here for the railing. And then just with a two tenths brush, I'm going to first place in a, a little upright for every pillar and post, and then I'll put in two more. And then with a four tenths brush, I'm going to paint in a few slightly more defined lines up at the front of the pier. But it's still, as you can see, fairly loose, not that detailed, because the pier is actually in the background of this painting. It is the supporting act. All these colours are really nice and muted and faint, which is fantastic. But it also means that we can place in now a few extra, I want to place in a few sort of extra uprights underneath the pier. So I'm going to keep consistent. So I'm going to use my previous ones I've painted as my reference and paint in some extra ones. Just nice and faint. And of course, as we go off into the distance, we, we don't sort of, we're not able to make quite so much sense of them. And then I've also noticed 
that we then start to have sort of horizontal bars from the front to back. I think if you just sort of choose something to focus on and keep consistent with it to the back, however wobbly it might seem, it's going to make sense to the piece. And then some crisscrosses between those two. And off into the distance it goes. Now I'm going to use a slightly more concentrated version of that shadow colour so I'm just getting a bit more of both the colours and I'm now going to start placing in some of the little sort of ornate lamp posts. So I'm just doing a sort of two little curves and some dots and of course these are going to get smaller the further away they are and then just in the foreground here we can add a little bit more of that colour to some of the architecture so you can see I've just added extra little sort of bits of darkness to just the top of the, the the poles there and now I'm just adding just bringing down now all the poles to the little pencil line I drew because we're basically gearing up for a bit of interesting water action. Now the last thing we haven't painted is this post here so I'm just going to place that in with this sort of darker shadow and now it is time to get our whole piece sort of grounded in the ocean a little bit more. So what I need is a sort of decent amount of, sort of ocean shadow mix, we'll call it. So putting lots of Payne's Grey into that water there. I'm also going to use a clean, a clean size eight brush. Now when I say clean I really need to make sure it is clean so I'm just really cleaning it off on the side of the rim of the brush. Yeah there we go, lovely. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sort of almost re-wet the page but I'm going to do it in sections so I'm going to focus first on the pier. So I'm just getting the area, making sure definitely they've got the area underneath these posts just a little bit wet. And if I do it sort of gently enough, it means that the area will, the already painted area won't be too disturbed. I also know that I want to do this little bit here and I also want to make sure I've got shadowy water coming off there as well. So I'm now going to re-paint in those shadowy lines coming down from the pier posts. I'm going to take my size 2 brush, just a little bit a little bit smaller than the size 8 so I've got a bit more control. Take a tiny bit of that colour and just give it a little bit more darkness towards the end because of the shadow of the pier underneath. But really it's, it's sort of done the job for me, it's done the job really nicely. And then I can take colour there of 
course that is coming into the ocean into the shore so we can just sort of begin it and then sort of ease it off a little bit but these ones and now I'm going to take my brown and I'm going to start to add a little bit of texture to the sort of the beach area which in turn is going to create just that slightly lighter water so where the water meets the ocean so we'll get a bit more brown a bit more shadow in there and just sort of replacing some little sandy pebbly bits just adding a bit of texture to our sand finish off this piece I'm now just looking around uh, at various sort of ways I can just bring it to life even more and I'm just starting to do a faint sort of ripple in the water here using the sand colors which is just really helping just bring out a little bit more of the sort of the ripples in the ocean so now just adding a little bit of a shadowy mix so I'm doing this with a sort of diagonal stroke it's, it's not massively visible but it just it's all about the little subtleties in watercolour and it's funny because you look now and you go oh actually a load of these shadows that we painted in it feels like they've all disappeared and you could sort of go back in and add some more and add more shadow in but also just remember that that pier is off in the distance and it works nicely the only thing I could do is place in uh, a sort of shadow for the for the beams sort of across the beach which I think would be rather nice I'm not going to see that one too much but again it's all about just things that help ground these items on the area that you're painting in um, so yeah so that is a rather nice sort of fairly simple introduction to painting something like a pier using the sense of perspective um, so what I'm going to do is let it all dry rub out the pencil and then we can peel off the paper so now I'm just peeling off the tape um, pencils rubbed out looking just just that lovely bit sort of lighter and brighter and um, this was actually a piece commissioned by one of my patrons so my patrons get to request topics for YouTube tutorials each month and I sort of do as many as I can so if you would really love to see me paint something very specific then you can join my Patreon uh, all the tiers from £2 a month up to £12 a month they all get a say in requesting uh, on the you choose YouTube feature each month um, and yeah love to see you there there's so much more than that and um, thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe See you again soon. Thanks so much for watching and I really hope that you got a lot out of that one and maybe want to adapt the design for a, a local pier near you. I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one. And of course if you never want to miss another video just hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell and we'll see you again next time. Okay, until next time, bye!